Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an episode Feed with Mathematics. Hi, I'm Eamon. In today's episode, I'm going to try to change your perspective on math. My dear viewer, if I ask you to add an apple to an apple, you'd say it's equal to apples. But what about if I remove the apples and simply said add? You'd say it equals zero. What about adding a negative apple to another negative apple? You may say that can really be represented. And that exactly is the topic of today's episode. You already know that negative times negative is equal positive. But have you ever thought about this with a practical example like our apples? There is not sure thing as a negative apple in the real world. In fact, for thousands of years, mathematicians rejected the real idea of negative numbers. Take the British mathematician Francis Mason in 1758. He described negative numbers as absurd entity, dark and mysterious. But why did we replace apples with negative value? Think we can't see, but still apply mathematical rules to them. And what about the square roots of negative numbers? For example, if I ask you the square root of 9, you completely say 3. Because 3 square equal 9. You didn't just memorize that. You can also visualize it. The draw square with an error of 9 units and the side length will be 3. The problem comes when I ask you what is the square root of minus 1? What number multiplied by itself gives it minus 1? Back to our square analogy. If you had a square with an error of negative 1, what would its side length be? It doesn't exist. The question itself doesn't make sense. You might ask, Eamon, why bother with negative number and their root? Why don't we just stick with the visible real number? Well, scientists struggle with this for a long time until they work expanded to algebra and in practical or to cubic equations. This is an equation where the variable x appear raised to the power of 3, like ax power 3 plus bx power 2 plus cx plus d equals 0. For example, 4x power 3 plus 6x equals 55. To solve an equation that means finding the value of x that make both sides equal. If you had no training in math, you just test value 0, 1, 2. Eventually, you find that the x equal to works correct, but it doesn't work for more complex equation. So, did mathematics even find the systemic solution? For centuries, the Greeks, Egyptian, Babylonians, and Chinese all try to solve cubic equation. In fact, Luca Pacello, teacher of Leonardo da Vinci, even claimed that cubic equation had no solution at all. Mathematician like Scipione del Ferro actually found algebraic solution, but he kept them secret. He revived them only on his deathbed to his student Antonio Fierro. Fierro ended up losing public debates Badly, even though he had part of the secrets. Later, Nicola Tartagli independently discovered solution for certain cubics, but like Belfiro, he chose to hide them. The turn point come with Girolamo Cardano. Tartagli swore him to secrecy, but Cardano eventually published it in his famous book, Ayers Magna. Why did Cardano break his promise? Simple, he was wealthy and reputation Matred more than honor. He wanted scientific glory, but he's the twist. While presenting the solution, Cardano encountered strange cubic equation. He know the correct answer, for instance, x equals 4. But the algebraic steps required him to take the square root of negative numbers. He was stuck. The solution exists, but the path of them seemed illogical. For Cardano, square roots of negative number were nonsense. So he left the problem unresolved. A decade later, Rafael Bombelli came along. He decided to embrace what Cardano rejected. He said, why are we stuck? 
The solution requires the square root of negative 1. We say it's impossible, like draw water or we fire. But what if we just created a new symbol? Not positive, not negative, just something different. Let's try it and see where it leads. And so Bombelli introduced a revolutionary idea. Try it, the square root of negative 1 as a new entity. Call it something independent. Use it in calculation and check if it produces a correct result. And it worked. He showed that assuming the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 equal negative 1 was a natural recovery of solution. For example, he successfully reached x equal 4. This makes the birth of a new mathematical world. Number that didn't exist physically, but that worked perfectly in theory. Later, René Descartes gave them the name imaginary number, simple as I by the later I. From this, mathematician built the system of complex number, each number having a real part and an imaginary part. For example, 5 plus 4i. Here, 5 is the real part and 4i is the imaginary part. And the rules is simple. Every time you see i times i, you replace it with negative 1. That's because the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 equal negative 1. Theoretically, the square root of any number multiplied by itself gives us back the number. For example, the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 9 equal 9. So, the square root of Sophie times the square root of Sophie equals Sophie. But we don't know actually who Sophie is. We can't hold her, we can't see her, and we don't know any detail about her. What we do know is if her square root multiply by itself or raise it to the power of 2, it gives back Sophie. Again, we don't know who Sophie is. Now, what's happening if we keep multiply i by itself over and over again? i times i equal negative 1. i times i times i equal i squared times i equal negative i. Alright, what about i power 4? Since i power 3 equal negative i, then i times negative i equal negative i squared equal negative negative 1 equal 1. Now, i power 5 equal i power 4 times i equal i. i power 6 equal negative 1. i power 7 equal negative i. i power 8 equal 1. i power 9 equal i. Do you not take something? The results start repeating minus 1, then minus i, then plus 1, then plus i. And then the cycle repeats again. Minus 1, minus i, plus 1, plus i, and so on endlessly. In the 19th century, the mathematician Argan proposed a new way to see complex numbers instead of just calculate them by drawing them. Imagine adding a vertical axis for imaginary number, forming what now called the Argand plane. Every complex number can then be represented as a point or vector on this plane having both a real part on the x-axis and an imaginary part on the y-axis. This vector form helps you understand complex number, not only just abstract values but also as quantities with magna and direction, just like force or movement in physics. From there, the discussion moves to the function. A relationship where change in one quantity causes a change in another. The variable that we can control or choose is called the independent variable, with the one who reacts to it is the dependent variable. To make it simple, imagine someone who gets angry every time they are interrupted. The more interruption, the greater the angry. So, we can say, angry is a function of the numbers of interruption. This same concept appears in mathematics where functions like sine and cosine describe how one quantity is various with respect to other. In the right angle triangle, sine of theta equal opposite divided by hypotenuse and cosine of theta equal adjacent divided by hypotenuse. This definition worked perfectly for angles up to 19 degrees. But when we push beyond 19 degrees, the right triangle collapses. 
The geometry no longer holds. Mathematician move beyond a triangle to the unit circle to define sine and cosine as represented waves like periodic function. Analyzing these waves of calculus led to complex differential equations. The breakthrough came from Leonard Euler, who discovered the break between wave function sine and cosine and the exponential function using complex number. At the head of this is the constant E, whose exponential function is unique because it remains unchanged by calculus. This provides a powerful simplified tools for engineers who use imaginary numbers to calculate perfectly real-world results, like voltage and currents. In the end, the mathematics take you on a journey from the real to the imaginary and back you again. Revealing imagination in mathematics is not a scare from reality, but the key to understand it. And that is the real magic of mathematics. A blend of reason and imagination that turn invisible idea into the language of the real world.